good morning one and all we the department of civil engineering central polytechnic college tiruvannadapuram is proudly conducting its first online faculty development program on water body rejuvenation strategies on behalf of our department i extend a warm welcome to all the dignitaries and delegates who are present here today this is an online program i request all the participants to ensure an uninterrupted internet connection and preferably use a headphone for proper communication india is currently experiencing extreme climatic event in the form of droughts and floods we have also witnessed the wrath of climate change for the past 3 years it is time for us to realize the need to revive and rejuvenate the water bodies which we are endowed with so today on words teachers day we teachers dedicate this faculty development program as a token of our commitment towards our nature let us now move up inaugural function nothing can be achieved without our almighty's blessings so let's start this event with a silent prayer now i would like to call upon our head of department rajalakshmi madam to deliver the welcome speech audible good morning to all respected principal distinguished guests head of department participants and all my dear colleagues it is my great pleasure and privilege to welcome all to the inaugural ceremony of first two day online fdp of civil department on the topic water body rejuvenation strategies a special mention to our respected principal shrimati bindu vasudevan ma'am central polytechnic college vatiyuka for her solid support and inspiration in every aspect that stimulated us to do our best so in every aspect i feel delighted to welcome shri jainet pj scientist and executive vice president of kerala state council for science technology fdp i would like to take this opportunity to cordial welcome to our head of department Sri Joshi Sir Mechanical, Sri Jodi Lal Sir Electric, Sri Manoj Sir Computer Department, Sri Maju Simon Sir Electronics Department, Sri Ajay Kumar Sir Textile Technology Department, Sri John Rao Sir General Department, and Sri Anikutan Ji Bakshar Supran for their guidance and moral support. A glad welcome to our participants from various polytechnic colleges who will make this event a remarkable one. and a pleasing welcome to all members of central polytechnic college vatirka to this inaugural program once again welcome all thank you thank you ma'am a beloved principal indu vasudevan madam being the backbone of this institution has always been a constant source of inspiration to make this event a reality now i call upon madam to deliver the presidential address for you madam hello audible anallo alle yan audible alle yes ma'am
സിനിമ ഡയറക്ടർ ശശികുമാർ സർ വേണ്ടി വാട്ടർ റീജിവനേഷൻ സ്ട്രാറ്റജീസ് എന്ന ടോപ്പിക്കില് ക്ലാസ് എടുക്കാൻ വേണ്ടിയിട്ടുള്ള ഫാക്കൽറ്റീസ് സെൻട്രൽ പോളിടെക്നിക് കോളേജ് സിവിൽ എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് ഹെഡ് ഓഫ് ഹെഡ് ഓഫ് ദി ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് രാജലക്ഷ്മി മറ്റ് ഹെഡ് ഓഫ് ദി ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ്സ് മറ്റ് സഹപ്രവർത്തകരെ മറ്റ് ട്രെയിനിങ് അറ്റൻഡ് ചെയ്യാൻ വന്നിട്ടുള്ള വിവിധ കോളേജുകളിൽ നിന്ന് വന്നിട്ടുള്ള ഫാക്കൽറ്റീസ് വളരെ സന്തോഷമുള്ള ഒരു മുഹൂർത്തമാണ് സെൻട്രൽ പോളിടെക്നിക് കോളേജ് ആദ്യമായിട്ടാണ് ഇങ്ങനെ ഒരു ഒരു ഫാക്ടറി ഡെവലപ്മെന്റ് പ്രോഗ്രാം കണ്ടക്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നത് തീർച്ചയായിട്ടും ഫംഗ്ഷൻ പറയുന്നത് ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ഇനോഗ്രേറ്റ് ചെയ്യാൻ വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് എനിക്ക് ശശികുമാർ സാറിനെ കാണുന്നത് ഒരു വലിയ മോട്ടിവേഷൻ ആയിട്ട് തോന്നുന്നു കാരണം ഞാൻ സാറിനെ നിർബന്ധിച്ച് സാറ് വേറെ എന്തൊക്കെയോ തിരക്കുകൾ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു പക്ഷെ ഒരുപാട് നിർബന്ധിച്ച് സാർ എന്തായാലും സാറിന് തിരക്കുകൾക്കിടയിൽ സമയം കണ്ടെത്തി വളരെ നേരത്തെ സാർ വന്നു അത് തന്നെയാണ് എനിക്ക് തോന്നുന്നു നമ്മുടെ പോളിടെക്നിക് കോളേജ് കോളേജുകളുടെ ലീഡറായിട്ട് നിന്നുകൊണ്ട് നമ്മുടെ ഊർജം ശക്തിയും ഒക്കെ ആയിട്ട് നിൽക്കുന്ന സാറിന് സാർ വീഡിയോയും ഓഹോണാണ് അതുകൊണ്ട് സാറിന് ഇങ്ങനെ കണ്ടുകൊണ്ട് സംസാരിക്കാൻ പറ്റുന്നത് തന്നെ ഒരു വലിയ മോട്ടിവേഷൻ നമ്മുടെ പ്രോഗ്രാം വളരെ നന്നായിട്ട് തന്നെ തുടങ്ങാൻ സാധിച്ചതിൽ സന്തോഷമുണ്ട് തന്നെ മറ്റെല്ലാവരും വളരെ ഉത്സാഹമായിട്ട് ഈ ഒരു അനിത തുടക്കം തുടങ്ങിയപ്പോഴാണ് എനിക്ക് ഇതിന്റെ ഒരു പ്രസക്തി കൂടുതൽ ഞാൻ അത്രത്തോളം ഒന്നും ആലോചിച്ചില്ല ഫംഗ്ഷൻ അല്ല ഒരു ടോപ്പിക് വന്നു അത് കൊടുത്തെങ്കിലും ഞാൻ ആലോചിച്ചില്ല അപ്പൊ അതിന്റെ ആ ഒരു റെലവൻസ് എനിക്ക് നന്നായി പിടികിട്ടിയത് ഇപ്പോൾ ഈ ഒരു ഇനോ തുടക്കത്തിലുള്ള ഒരു ആമുഖ സംസാരം കേട്ടപ്പോഴാണ് എന്തായാലും വളരെ സന്തോഷം ഇങ്ങനെ ഒരു ടോപ്പിക്കിൽ തന്നെ നമുക്ക് തുടങ്ങാൻ സാധിച്ചത് ഇനിയും ഇനിയും ഒരുപാട് പ്രോഗ്രാംസ് ഇങ്ങനെ ഇതുപോലെ എല്ലാവർക്കും പോളിടെക്നിക് കോളേജുകൾക്ക് ഇത് വളരെ നല്ലൊരു സുവർണ കാല അവസരമാണ് ഇങ്ങനെ ഫാക്കൽറ്റി ഡെവലപ്മെന്റ് പ്രോഗ്രാംസ് നടത്താം അതിനുള്ള എല്ലാ സപ്പോർട്ടും നമുക്ക് സിറ്ററിൽ നിന്നും സെക്രട്ടറിയിൽ നിന്നും എല്ലാം കിട്ടുന്നുണ്ട് എല്ലാ എല്ലാം നന്ന വളരെ നന്നായിട്ട് തീരട്ടെ എന്ന് ഈ പ്രോഗ്രാം തീരട്ടെ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുകയാണ് എല്ലാ ആശംസകളും നേരുകയാണ് അതോടൊപ്പം പാർട്ടിസിപ്പൻസിന് നല്ല ഇവിടെ വന്നെത്തിയ എല്ലാവരോടും ഞാൻ ഇതിൽ പങ്കെടുക്കുന്ന എല്ലാവരോടും വോട്ട് ഓഫ് താങ്ക്സ് പറയേണ്ടത് ഞാൻ അല്ലായെങ്കിൽ പോലും കോളേജിന്റെ പ്രിൻസിപ്പൾ എന്നുള്ള രീതിയിലുള്ള എന്റെ ഒരു കൃതജ്ഞത ഞാൻ അറിയിക്കുകയാണ് നന്ദി നമസ്കാരം Thank you, ma'am. We have our distinguished guest, Shri K.N. Shashikumar, Senior Joint Director, Polytechnic Stream, Directorate of Technical Education with us. Sir, we now invite you to inaugurate the function. Oh. Audible, no? Ah, audible, no, sir. Thank you. This is the meeting of the meeting. എല്ലാവർക്കും ആദ്യമായി നമസ്കാരം ഇതിന്റെ അധ്യക്ഷ സ്ഥാനം വഹിക്കുന്ന സി പി ടിയുടെ പ്രിൻസിപ്പൽ ശ്രീമതി ബിന്ദു വാസ്തവൻ അതുപോലെ സെൻട്രൽ പോളിടെക്നിക്കിലെ മറ്റ് ബഹുമാനരായ അധ്യാപകരെ ഈ ട്രെയിനിങ് പ്രോഗ്രാമിൽ പങ്കെടുത്തുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്ന മറ്റ് പാർട്ടിസിപ്പൻസ് നമ്മള് ഈ കൊറോണ കാല ഒരു അന്ത്യമില്ലാതെ നീണ്ടുപോയിക്കൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്ന ഒരു കാലഘട്ടമാണ് ഓൺലൈൻ ക്ലാസ്സുകളിൽ കൂടെയാണ് ഇപ്പോൾ വിദ്യാഭ്യാസം നടന്നുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്നത് എന്ന് നമ്മളുടെ പഴയ രീതിയിലേക്കുള്ള വിദ്യാഭ്യാസ സമ്പ്രദായത്തിലേക്ക് വരാൻ പറ്റുമെന്ന് നമുക്ക് ഇപ്പോഴും തിരിച്ചറിയാൻ പറ്റാത്ത ഒരു സാഹചര്യത്തിലാണ് എന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ കൂടുതൽ രൂക്ഷമായി കൊണ്ട് ഇരിക്കുന്ന ഒരു കാലാവസ്ഥയാണ് ഇപ്പോൾ ഉള്ളത് അപ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് ഇത്തരം ട്രെയിനിങ് പ്രോഗ്രാംസ് ഓൺലൈൻ ആയിട്ട് മാത്രമേ നടത്താൻ കഴിയുള്ളൂ അപ്പോ ഇവിടെ ഇപ്പോൾ സെൻട്രൽ പോളിടെക്നിക് ആദ്യമായിട്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നു അത് എല്ലാ പ്രിൻസിപ്പൽമാരെ ഇതൊരു ചലഞ്ചായിട്ട് എടുത്തുകൊണ്ട് കഴിയുന്നത്ര ട്രെയിനിങ് പ്രോഗ്രാംസ് നടപ്പിലാക്കണം എല്ലാവർക്കും എല്ലാവിധ ആശംസകൾ നേരുന്നു ഈ ഒരു പ്രോഗ്രാം ട്രെയിനിങ് പ്രോഗ്രാം എല്ലാവർക്കും ഗുണകരമായി തീട്ടെ എന്ന് ആശംസിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് ഈ ട്രെയിനിങ് പ്രോഗ്രാമിന്റെ ഉദ്ഘാടനം നിർവഹിച്ചായി പ്രഖ്യാപിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് നിർത്തുന്നു നന്ദി നമസ്കാരം ഹലോ താങ്ക് യു സാർ ഫോർ യുവർ കൈൻഡ് വേർഡ്സ് Now it is time to listen to the good words of our well wishers the HODs of Central Polytechnic College First I would like to call upon Shri Joshi Aras head of the Department of Mechanical Engineering to say a few words Over to you sir Hello 
Welcome. Yes, sir. Women, uh, Senior Joint Director, Sri Sachumar, sir. Other near principal, Sri Sri Madhi Bindu Vasudevan. At the head of the departments, the the faculties, at the CPT level, so that's it. And that is our principal department. Well, CPT level, at that one faculty development program. The preparation of that level, another strong area. The second was that one program. And our study department. Well, minimum one level, and just that program level, and a basic. In the Alamini, CPT, Linim, Budivia, Corsugal, Iron Napilaka, the Budivia, Corsugal, Kodanga, and the Shikan on that. A poll, five days single on La Corsugal, Namal strategy in Lana Koda, in the Alipol, online classes in Dame, online FDP, Gilday Mugavana, E. Online FDP, one of them, Sarkar and Navasamba Tiber Sundiana, Pashe. But already, I think in Lafora, my or some better than my online classes mark on Pika. If DP per page, a lingual number of GADA, a land there another value to the way and if a beauty so my turn, even online classes will Kelkan Kana, Padikam Bangan every Guna under Pine and a cost effective no pay and uncle, one day again Lafora, my or Sanga the Anna online program will as a page if DP a lingual number of Matrasilo. കർണാടകത്തോ Intimacy equal number of the Angulum, Ginella program will Toron Narakate, any program in Lab with Asham Sugal and Erno, the Pangarakana, Matula Institutional Faculty, Pertagium, CPT, Norayan, Mahas, Tavan, the Lake, Sawan, and Jidon Arthno, and the Namaskar. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to call upon Sri Jodilal, sir, head of the Department of Electrical Engineering. To say a few words. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, sir. Okay. 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 I'm going to say that number one before Corona, after Corona. We reward Sathya the government of the government of Chitin or Kalata. Corona is not a reason of canon, we reward the two. We have a reason of canon, we reward Sathya the government of Kalakata Lake and Mogambo. Palapodi, FTP, Palerio attended the Yatta with Karana or in the train to the Yatra Jay the one. Attended the Kayatra. Which a course attended the Yatra with the Faculty in अब आंगने वाला लेवल में नौकरी बो एफटीपी आती है शॉन और चाहे अल्लाह तो रखे ऐसे नौकरी में इंद्रियां ना हमारे एफटीपी अंदर लोग मारा करे कारण हम एफटीपी अंदर वाले फैकल्टी के फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट अंदर वाले लाह अर्थात इलाज ने उल्टे लोग ही आह री दी ले फैकल्टी के अंदर 
കാരണം നേരത്തെയൊക്കെ ഉള്ള ഫാക്കൽറ്റി ഡെവലപ്മെന്റ് പ്രോഗ്രാമിൽ കാരണം എനിക്ക് അറിയാന്നുള്ള കേസ് ഞാൻ ഇവിടെ പ്ലേസ്മെന്റ് ഓഫീസറായിട്ട് സോറി ട്രെയിനിങ് മാനേജറായിട്ട് നിൽക്കുന്ന സമയത്ത് ഇതിനൊക്കെ ഓരോ റിപ്പോർട്ടുകളൊക്കെ ഉണ്ടാക്കണമെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിരുന്നു പിന്നെ നമ്മുടെ സെറ്റർ പറഞ്ഞത് കാരണം ഓരോ ഫാക്കൽറ്റി റിപ്പോർട്ട് ഉണ്ടാക്കി അത് ശരിക്കും ഇൻസ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂഷനിൽ മാറാം എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ടായി അതൊന്നും ശരിക്കും ഇപ്പോൾ നടപ്പിലാക്കി കാണുന്നില്ല അങ്ങനെ ഒരു ബുദ്ധിമുട്ട് കാണുന്നുണ്ട് പിന്നെ വേറൊരു കേസ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് സാധാരണ കണ്ടുവരുന്ന ഒരു കാര്യം എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഈ എഫ് ഡി പി ഇപ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ ഇപ്പോൾ ഇലക്ട്രിക്കലിൻ്റെ കേസ് എടുക്കുകയാണെങ്കിൽ മൈക്രോ കൺട്രോളർ പ്രോഗ്രാമിൻ്റെ ഒരു എഫ് ഡി പിക്ക് ഒരു ഫാക്കൽറ്റി പങ്കെടുത്തതിന് ശേഷം നേരെ ഇൻസ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂഷനിൽ വന്നിട്ട് ആ മൈക്രോ കൺട്രോളറുമായിട്ട് ബന്ധപ്പെട്ട ഒരു ക്ലാസ്സും ഈ ഫാക്കൽറ്റി എടുത്ത് കാണുന്നുണ്ട് നേരെ എടുക്കുന്നത് ഇൻഡക്ഷൻ മെഷീനോ അല്ല എസ്റ്റിമേറ്റിംഗ് ക്വസ്റ്റിനോ അങ്ങനെയുള്ള സബ്ജക്റ്റുകളാണ് അപ്പോൾ അതൊന്നും ഒഴിവാക്കാൻ കഴിയുന്നതും ശ്രദ്ധിക്കാം കാരണം ഇതുകൊണ്ട് കുട്ടികൾക്ക് പ്രയോജനപ്പെടണം കാരണം ഫാക്കൽറ്റിക്ക് പ്രയോജനപ്പെടണം കുട്ടികൾക്കും പ്രയോജനപ്പെടണം അപ്പൊ അങ്ങനെയുള്ള പ്രയോജനം ഇങ്ങനെയുള്ള എഫ് ടി പി പ്രോഗ്രാമുകളിൽ നിന്നും ഫാക്കൽറ്റിക്ക് ഉണ്ടാകണം വെറുതെ ഒരു എം ബി അക്രഡിറ്റേഷനോ അല്ല ഈ കാസോ അങ്ങനെ അതിന് ഉപരി അങ്ങനെ ഒരു ഡെവലപ്മെന്റിന് വേണ്ടി ഈ പ്രോഗ്രാമുകൾ ഉപയോഗിക്കണം കാരണം കാര്യങ്ങൾ വാക്കൂടെ കടമെടുപ്പ് ഞാൻ അവസാനിപ്പിക്കാം കഴിഞ്ഞ ദിവസം നമ്മുടെ പാലാരി വട്ടം പാലം പൊളിച്ചപ്പോൾ നമ്മുടെ മന്ത്രി ഇതിനെപ്പറ്റി മിനിസ്റ്റർ അവിടെ നിന്ന് പറഞ്ഞത് നമ്മൾ ഓർക്കും കാരണം ഒന്നാമത് സിവിലിന്റെ എഫ് ഡി പി ആയത് കൊണ്ട് ആ ഒരു അതുകൂടെ ഞാനിവിടെ പറയാൻ ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്നു കാരണം നമുക്ക് എല്ലാവർക്കും അറിയാം ഇ ശ്രീധരൻ കാരണം ഇ ശ്രീധരനെ പോലുള്ള ഒരുപാട് എഞ്ചിനീയേഴ്സ് നമ്മുടെ രാജ്യത്ത് ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നെങ്കിൽ ഒരു പക്ഷെ പിന്നെ ഇപ്പം നമ്മളൊക്കെ നമ്മൾ ആ പൊളിറ്റിക്സിലൊന്നും പോകുന്നില്ല ഇപ്പോൾ ഉള്ള ആ ഒരു പ്രശ്നങ്ങളൊക്കെ ഒരുവിധം നമുക്ക് ഒഴിവാക്കാൻ കഴിയുമെന്ന് അദ്ദേഹം പറഞ്ഞിരുന്നു അങ്ങനെ അങ്ങനെയുള്ള ഈ സിവിൽ എഞ്ചിനീയറിങ്ങിന്റെ പ്രോഗ്രാമുകൾ ഈ ഫാക്കൽറ്റീസ് പങ്കെടുക്കുന്ന എല്ലാ ഫാക്കൽറ്റീസിനും പ്രയോജനകരമാകട്ടെ കൂടാതെ അതുവഴി നമ്മുടെ വിദ്യാർത്ഥികൾക്കും പ്രയോജനം ഉണ്ടായി ഒരുപാട് നമ്മൾ ഞാൻ ഈ പറഞ്ഞതുപോലെ ഇ ശ്രീധരനെ പോലുള്ള ഒരുപാട് എഞ്ചിനീയേഴ്സിന് നമ്മുടെ സമൂഹത്തിന് സംഭാവന ചെയ്യാൻ ഇതുപോലുള്ള എഫ് ടി പികൾ കൊണ്ട് പ്രയോജനമാകട്ടെ എന്നും കൂടെ പറഞ്ഞുകൊണ്ട് ഞാൻ അവസാനിപ്പിക്കുന്നു നന്ദി നമസ്കാരം Thank you, sir. Now, I call upon Shri Manoj P.S. Sir, Head of the Department of Computer Science to say a few words. Good morning. Prepared Sashiv Kumar, sir. Vindu teacher. And I call upon the Jeeva Nadi Aya Rajarashtami teacher. മറ്റ് ബഹുമാന്യരെ നമ്മൾ പല എഫ് ഡി പിസ് ഈ ഇൻസ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂഷനിൽ കണ്ടക്ട് ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ടെങ്കിലും ഓൺലൈൻ മോഡിൽ ആദ്യമായിട്ടാണ് ഒരു എഫ് ഡി പി കണ്ടക്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നത് വളരെ നൂതനമായിട്ടുള്ള പല പ്രവർത്തനങ്ങളിൽ കൂടെ മാതൃക കാട്ടിയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് ആണ് സിവിൽ എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് അപ്പൊ അവര് പല പല നമ്മുടെ ഇൻസ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂഷന്റെ പല പല ആക്ടിവിറ്റീസിൽ പങ്കെടുക്കുന്നുണ്ട് പല പല ആക്ടിവിറ്റീസിൽ നമുക്ക് ദിശ നൽകിയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് ആണ് അങ്ങനെ ഒരു ഓൺലൈൻ മോഡലുള്ള ഒരു പുതിയ പ്രോഗ്രാം ഒരു എഫ് ഡി പി നടത്തി നമുക്ക് വീണ്ടും ഒരു മാതൃക കാണിക്കുകയാണ് അപ്പം ഈ ഈ ഒരു കോഴ്സും ഫാക്കൽറ്റീസിനും അതുപോലെ സ്റ്റുഡൻസിനും വളരെ പ്രയോജനപ്പെടട്ടെ എന്ന് ആശംസിക്കുന്നു ഈ കോഴ്സിന് കോഴ്സ് ഡെവലപ്പ് ചെയ്യുന്നതിലും കണ്ടന്റ് ഡെവലപ്പ് ചെയ്യുന്നതിലും അതുപോലെ പുതിയ പുതിയ ഇതിന് എക്സ്പെർട്ടേസ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഫാക്കൽറ്റീസിനെ കൊണ്ടുവരാനും വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് പ്രവർത്തിച്ച എല്ലാ ആൾക്കാരെയും പ്രത്യേകം അഭിനന്ദിക്കുകയും ഈ കോഴ്സിന് എല്ലാവിധ ആശംസകളും നേർന്നുകൊണ്ട് നിർത്തുന്നു നന്ദി നമസ്കാരം താങ്ക് യു സർ നൗ ലൈക്ക് ടു ഇൻവൈറ്റ് ശ്രീ രാജീവ് സർ from textile department to say a few words hello thank you bahumana betta yogathinte adhyaksha nammada preparatory principal bindu vasudev teacher adu pole thanne ee yogam inaugurate cheyida nammada preparatory senior joint director shashi kumar sir nammade idine ee fdp programme ചുക്കാൻ പിടിച്ചുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്ന നമ്മുടെ സിവിൽ എച്ച് ഒ ഡി രാജലക്ഷ്മി ടീച്ചർ നമ്മുടെ പോളിടെക്നിക്കിലെ മറ്റ് കേൾക്കുന്നല്ലേ ടീച്ചറെ ഹലോ ഹലോ സാർ കേൾക്കാം കേൾക്കാം 
നമ്മുടെ ബഹുമാനപ്പെട്ട സഹപ്രവർത്തകരെ ഈ പ്രോഗ്രാമിൽ പങ്കെടുത്തുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്ന വിവിധ പോളിടെക്നിക്കുകളിൽ നിന്നുള്ള പാർട്ടിസിപ്പൻസ് സെൻട്രൽ പോളിടെക്നിക്കിന്റെ ഒരു അഭിമാനമായിട്ട് നമ്മുടെ സിവിൽ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് ആദ്യത്തെ എഫ് ഡി പി പ്രോഗ്രാം നടത്തുകയാണ് എഫ് ഡി പി പ്രോഗ്രാം രണ്ടു ദിവസമായി ചുരുക്കിയത് കൊണ്ട് തന്നെ നമുക്കറിയാം ഇതിന്റെ ക്ലാസ്സുകൾ നടത്താനുള്ള സമയത്തിനും കുറച്ച് ബുദ്ധിമുട്ടുണ്ടാവും നേരത്തെ നമ്മുടെ ജോഷി സാർ പറഞ്ഞതുപോലെ ഈ ഇത്തരം ഓൺലൈൻ എഫ് ഡി പി വന്നപ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് നഷ്ടപ്പെട്ടത് നമ്മുടെ ഒരു കൂട്ടായ്മ കാരണം നേരിട്ട് കണ്ട് സൗഹൃദങ്ങൾ പങ്കുവയ്ക്കാനും ഷെയർ ചെയ്യാനും ഒക്കെ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്ന നമ്മുടെ ആ ഒരു അവസരം നമുക്ക് നഷ്ടപ്പെട്ടു എന്ന് മാത്രമേ ഉള്ളൂ പക്ഷെ അക്കാഡമിക് ലെവലിൽ നമുക്ക് കിട്ടാവുന്ന ഒരുപാട് കാര്യങ്ങൾ നമുക്ക് ഇതിൽ കൂടെ കൈമാറ്റം ചെയ്യാൻ കഴിയും എന്തായാലും ഈ രണ്ട് ദിവസം പ്രയോജനപ്രദമായ രീതിയിലുള്ള ക്ലാസ്സുകൾ ഉണ്ടാവും എന്ന് തന്നെയാണ് ഞങ്ങൾ അറിയുന്നത് ഇതിന്റെ പിന്നിൽ പ്രവർത്തിച്ച എന്റെ സഹപ്രവർത്തകരായിട്ടുള്ള സിവിൽ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റിലെ മുഴുവൻ സ്റ്റാഫ് അംഗം ഹലോ ജോൺ റോസ് സർ I think sir has got disconnected from the uh, internet. So we will move forward with the program. So now upon the coordinator of the program Sri Kiran SR lecturer in civil engineering Central Polytechnic College to deliver the vote of thanks. Good morning everybody. Respected Madam Principal, Distinguished Chief Guest, speakers, committed faculty members, participants, colleagues and all my dear friends. It is indeed a matter of great pride that the first online faculty development program organized by the Central Polytechnic College Thiruvannathapura just got inaugurated on the very day of International Teachers Day. And before we step forward into the first session of the program, it is time for us to express gratitude to all those who set the ball rolling. To begin with, our beloved principal, Srimadhi Bindu Vasudevan, a true inspiration and the real kingpin of our institution. On behalf of all the staff members of CPT, we express our love and gratitude to you, teacher. Next, it's time to thank our beloved chief guest, Sri K. N. Shashikumar, sir, Senior Joint Director, Directorate of Technical Education. Despite a busy schedule, he has graced this function with his beautiful words. We thank you, sir. Now, our eminent speakers who have promised to join us to engage the different sessions, we are always very grateful to you. We are also grateful to our beloved well-wishers, the heads of sessions. Now, coming to our distinguished participants, the teachers, this program was successfully realized only because of you. And so a big salute to all of you on the World Teachers Day. Now, to all my dear colleagues who have graced this occasion, we express our heartfelt gratitude. We also thank the State Board of Technical Education who has provided us with the WebEx meeting platform. Wishing you all a wonderful day ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Kiran, sir. With us, we have now reached the end of our inaugural ceremony. 
thank you all for attending this ceremony. Now we can have a short break for five minutes and we will start with our first session at 10. Please do join using the same link and on time. Thank you all. Janet Sarah Janet Sarah Kekan under Asara screen on the share Yamo. Share on the Kanam, sir, uh, full screen it. <coughs> okay. Okay, let share it. That the answer. Welcome to the first session of our two-day faculty development program. This session on rejuvenation of water bodies, approach and challenges 
is handled by Sri Jainet PJ, signed his <coughs> Executive Vice President's Office, Kerala State Council for Science, Technology and Environment. Sri Jainet PJ possesses B.Tech in Civil Engineering from University of Calicut and M.Tech in Hydrology from IIT Rurki. His fields of competence include Hydrological Modeling, Flood Risk Assessment, Stream Rejuvenation, Dam Break Analysis and Source Water Vulnerability Analysis. It is indeed a great pleasure to have you here today with us. Sir, we welcome you to this program and request you to take over this session. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Am I audible, actually? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I got this opportunity to uh, to take a part of this uh, training program on uh, rejuvenation of water body strategies. Uh, actually, I am doing a filling up job because this session was about to uh, handled by Professor K P Sudhir, the Executive Vice President of uh, Kerala State Council for Science and Technology. Unfortunately, he is out of station, so uh, he asked me to take the session and. Uh, uh, First of all, again, I congratulate uh, the organizers of uh, that, uh, this program because uh, the relevance of the topic is very much, uh, uh, very much, uh, you know, uh, very timely, I should say, because uh, we have seen our uh, our water bodies, right? And uh, <clears throat> to come to the topic, rejuvenation, rejuvenation of water bodies. We have we have seen or we have heard about rejuvenation of water bodies uh, in many ways, many many capacity. Uh, people are engaged in different activities. Uh, one thing always lack is uh, a coordinated approach to get a water body to a very good, uh, you know, a sustainable level. So we will discuss about the rejuvenation. Um, <clears throat> before beginning, I would like to, you know, uh, first time I'm getting an opportunity to, you know, give a class to uh, a bunch of teachers. So I take this opportunity to wish you all a happy Teacher's Day. It is indeed a great privilege, you know, to, to see you all teachers in front of me in the morning on Teacher's Day. And uh, uh, one thing I would request is, uh, you know, Keep a few of, uh, of your video on so that you know I can see few faces. See the online training programs are like uh, slightly you know we get our focus slightly away because when we, we don't see faces. So I request few of you to please switch on your video also. Okay. And. Um, uh about the chat window um uh, if you can you know keep on uh, put some messages whenever something pops up that will also be good because uh otherwise in online classes what we always used to see is that your know, connection uh, sometimes you know there won't be that proper connection between the presenter and the audience so let's try to keep that in uh, in in like the through messages and video, okay? Okay. <clears throat> to talk about the Kerala, as an introduction, we know Kerala is uh, abundant, having natural resources, especially water. About 3.2 percentage of uh, Kerala is having water bodies, so which is great, and we have many rivers, backwaters, ponds, and tanks, and we have built uh, about more than 50 reservoirs, large ones like Uduki. But the question is, are our water bodies in good health? We have, we have heard about many stories. 
In 2016, the Standing Committee on Water Resources of Lok Sabha, on their report on repair, renovation, and restoration of water bodies, they conducted study. They are conducted study across the country. They collected the information from all the government, state governments, including Kerala. The Kerala had reported that the water bodies have deteriorated in the state due to few reasons which are listed in this slide. If you can go through the slide, one thing is very predominant, which is the human activity. Starting from the population to the last one, the construction activity, the role of human being is very evident. So I just wanted to bring this slide just because of that reasons. So in the recent past, the need to rejuvenate our water bodies used to come in our media if you look at the another slide which i wanted to share just because you know as a knowledge purpose in new zealand there is a river called uh, wankhoini this river was given human status legal human status in 2017 the world is seeing the water bodies they started treating them very carefully, they even have started giving them the legal human status. New Zealand is anyway very high with uh, human uh, legal and human rights and all, but giving a river a legal human status was very much appreciated. Coming to care, started giving a lot of importance to rejuvenation, reviving, restoration of our water bodies, including tanks, ponds. A lot of activities are going on across the state. Even the state government had also initiated few programs on that. Okay, that was just for an introduction to give you a glimpse of what is going on. Now let's get into our topic directly which is rejuvenation of water bodies, an approach and challenges. I would, uh, you know, people, there, there are different philosophies of different uh, ways of creating a rejuvenation program. Uh, I would uh, call them in a phase ways, like four phases I used to say. First one is a planning phase, then there is a scientific phase and implementation phase and maintenance phase. Okay, what we do in all the phases? In the planning phase, you usually identify the health of the water body. Then we assess the problems and the reasons behind it. Then we assess the catchment of the water body and their properties and different stakeholders will be consulted and uh, their information will be collected to understand what are the issues. And an initial development of a roadmap with uh, the identified issues and possible solutions. That's what is part of a planning phase. Then comes the scientific phase. In scientific phase, the initial problems and the initial solutions that we have identified, we evaluate them, we study them thoroughly, and we focus on one by one, like there would be many, many issues, like there may be uh, many teams may be needed to work on, like uh, somebody focused on hydrology, geology, and uh, maybe a few people who are concentrated uh, who have experienced in uh, water quality uh, 
so many types of scientific uh, teams may be involved to study the the problems and solutions in that and to come up with the scientific solutions scientific backgrounds of the solutions then we used to usually come up with a detailed uh, technical report in the scientific phase so there are two more phases that as i told in the last slide the implementation phase and the maintenance phase implementation phase is the uh it's a difficult and uh, prolonged one i should say the first thing to do in the implementation phase would be to come up with a detailed financial uh, strategy and report and we need to prioritize the measures that are identified in the scientific phase which one should be done first what should be given priority and usually the implementation phase they do the implementation from the ridge to the valley not from the valley to upstream yeah from the upstream to downstream and we need to monitor the implemented measures and also document it and the fourth phase this is the most critical phase maintaining what we have achieved or what we have rectified you know it is very easy to conduct a session of you know cleaning a water body that is what is happening in most of our state or in the globe i should say maintaining a status of a water body is the most difficult and that takes a lot of effort and uh, commitment from all the stakeholders of the water body including human beings <coughs> so in my presentation uh, we are uh, i work on the cwrd and center for water resources development and management uh, we focus on the first two phases of the rejuvenation approach generally the third and fourth phases usually used to be handled by the implementation implementation line departments of the governments like irrigation soil survey and all so i would uh, i know there are more uh, three four three other speakers coming into this uh, seminar so uh, i am focusing on the first two phases and uh, uh, for this you know on an online platform it is very difficult to speak with uh, theory i know uh, so what i am planning to do is uh, i am going to uh, show few two of the uh, case studies that we had uh, performed in the past and to give you some kind of you know feeling of what we are actually doing in the planning phase and scientific phase so before that if anybody has any doubt you please raise it so that you know i can just move on okay how many of you have heard about uh, pulaman todu pulaman todu in kotaragara i know pretty sure that uh, few of you will be from that area pulaman todu pulaman todu is uh, it is a tributary of kalara river it passes through kotaragara kotaragara town as you can see in the middle of the catchment itself kotaragara town falls this is the legislative administrative boundaries of the catchment parts part of the legislative assemblies of kotaragara and putna patnapuram and there are seven panchayats and kotaragara municipality so these are the scientific investigations we carried out in this study we reviewed the hydrological setting historical changes in the catchment we had few field observations water quality were assessed and we tried to identify of the catchment 
then we came up with uh, action plans of rejuvenation and we analyzed the markets and advantages of it. The hydrological setting, so the catchment of uh, Palamandodu has a 65 kilometer square area. The rainfall is uh, fairly distributed and uh, it has uh, about half the rainfall receiving from southwest monsoon, about uh, 30 percentage from northeast and the, the catchment also receives summer rainfall. To understand the flow in the stream, we did a modeling approach and we came up with numbers of monthly flow. And the climatic water balance was also performed. From the water balance of the watershed, what we came up was during non monsoon season. There is stress, there is stress in the catchment, especially in the downstream areas. This is the DEM, the elevation varies from 116 to 10 meter in the catchment. The geology, geology, it has a 5 to 15 meter hard rock areas and uh, it has a bearing thickness of 2 to 15 meter. Coming to the historic changes, the main thing we noticed is the land use change. In 1990, when it was compared with the land use of 2016-17, uh, what we found is that 93 percentage of the paddy land of 1990 was converted. If you look into this, the table on the uh, currently the catchment is having a paddy cultivation area of 10.8 hectares, which was about uh, 1110 20 hectares. Before so, 1108.3 of paddy land was converted in this period from 1990. We know what happens when we do paddy cultivation, right? There will be a water column used to be there during the cultivation, especially in the initial period of uh, paddy plantations. So, what happened is that. Water column used to give a lot of water to the water table through infiltration and percolation and all. So, <clears throat> there is a reason on land use. Then we analyzed the population. When we compared the 2001 and 11 populations, population density has increased by 278. Right now, it would have reached another 1,400 uh, per kilometer square. The rainfall also, there was some changes. If you look at the mean annual rainfall of the long-term average, it was in the range of 2,500 mm per year. It has reduced into about 1,800 mm in 2000 2011 region. Even though distribution of the entire year was almost identical. Then we went to the site. We saw what is existing in the Palamantodo. We even walked from the upstream to downstream. There were a few areas where even the sewage lines from certain hostels, including some worship places, were directly discharging to the stream. If you look at the picture number four, 
the color is different, right? That was one of those areas. And if you look at the picture file, I have a video of that, I can share that. Are you able to see this video? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so this was a check dam right in the, the bridge that you are seeing is the uh, MC road. So this is in the Kotarakara itself, but inside the town itself. So this was the situation when we visited the place. A lot of dumping of waste at this check dam location was going on. So it has become a you know dumping site of the Kotarakara town. And look at the water color and there is no flow actually. What happens here is, because there is no non monsoon flow, all the waste accumulates at this point. There are other check dams also, where also this kind of accumulation happens. And this accumulation will be there for a long time, like two, three months. And when the monsoon begins, then the waste comes into the Kalada River, into the downstream areas. Let me get back to my presentation. So similar site was there on at six also at the six the beginning of that uh, Milam Bridge. The severe one was the fifth one, Pulaman Bridge. Then we unleashed the water quality. Uh, there were few locations, especially that uh, number four location of the previous slide. We were sure seeing many issues, especially the E. coli. Okay, so after visiting the site, doing some analysis of the past data, and we had many interaction with the different people and all kind of other stakeholders, including irrigation officers, uh, KCB, and all, we understood kind of issues that the Palaman Dodi is facing. And we categorized them into four. One is the pollution in the stream. Second, flow regime alterations. Third one is uh, non-monsoon flow in the stream. And uh, presence of obstructions. In the pollution, as I told before, the untreated sewage was draining. Then there was dumping of waste from hotels, poultry farms, etc. And the one thing we understood that the laxity of enforcement of legislation and awareness, lack of awareness. In the flow regime alterations, there were encroachments from the upstream to the downstream areas. And there were a few areas sand mining was going on and some local depressions were also formed, which was altering the natural slope of the stream bed. Then there was reduction of non-monsoon flow in the stream. As I told before, the land use change was there, variation of rainfall is there, 
hillocks was also there was mining of hillocks which were, will also uh, slightly contribute to the reduction of uh, because of the reduction base flow and higher groundwater drop we talked about the higher population density the groundwater drop increase also monsoon flows especially so and those constructions especially you know in inappropriate uh, locations because uh, inside a town uh, a good option i usually prefer them to uh, at an upstream location because uh, these kind of activities will be minimized so we came up with a uh, few action plans to you know rejuvenate the stream so there were 11 action plans we came up with uh, as i have listed the four problems down and uh, the action plans were addressing one of the those problems as given in the brackets few of them are you know giving more like one or two uh, issues were addressed so i will talk about this action plan one by one so you get uh, a slight more idea first one was the identification of point sources of pollution and enforcement of laws so this was a collective effort of the the ml of the area uh somebody uh, advocate aisha aisha poti and all the government department was also involved in the study and uh, you know so when we presented our findings all the representatives from all the you know implementing agencies like uh, and uh, even all the local bodies representatives everyone was uh, present there so what we did is in the action plan we gave the timelines for implementing it and the agency who should be taking the action and who should be supporting it that way we presented it so as we know the point source of pollution the uh, the right agency to implement it is case pcb the pollution control board and the district electorate with the help of uh, with local bodies and support from the uh, elected members then the second action plan was to you know conservation measures in the uh, catchment of palamantodu uh, at different locations many many type of uh, conservation measures are possible as given in the let's say uh, we also we you know i know i don't know whether you have a uh, familiar with subsurface dikes with this is just like uh, uh, underground dams actually so uh, the upper reaches of uh, pulamantodu was having uh, higher slopes so we uh, proposed to you know do the feasibility of uh, having few subsurface dikes so that you know the the velocity of the uh, groundwater movement is uh, minimized and there is more water during non monsoon season and the third one was to you know remove and which is the difficult task uh, as you all know and to reinstate the natural slope we proposed a few bed level cross bars so that you know wherever we need to uh, alter the slopes into our desired levels we can fix the top of the bed level crossbar so that the sedimentation happens gradually and the slope also maintains in a, in a period of time and we propose the removal of the obstructions in the stream a uh, few of the check dams to some other locations few of them to be removed completely we uh, proposed to change them and the uh, irrigation and water resource department was given the uh, responsibility of that few locations the river banks were also needed to be strengthened uh, 
that was also with the help of uh, soil survey and soil conservation department then even though we had proposed to uh, conduct uh, conserve means perform conserve conservation measures in the catchment it takes time as we all know conservation measures uh, usually takes uh, at least one or two uh, water year to give you yield a uh, normal soil flow so as a quick suggestion like quick uh, solution there were uh, uh, canals going through the kallur irrigation project canals were going passing through the catchment in the stream area so during non monsoon season we proposed to release a few uh, amount of water to one of the streams of uh, kolaman todu so that uh, non monsoon season there is a, a minimum flow available through the stream and we also analyze how much should be released to maintain that much flow and we came up with a 0.3 meter cube per second which is about 300 liters per second and another suggestion was to create a pondage of stream we uh, look for a location and found uh, uh, there is a place called uh, kochi mean pidi par and mean pidi par these are uh, these are uh, tourist spots so in between there was a location identified to construct a small dam like small uh, storage pondage i should say not a dam um, with the minimal capacity but to ensure uh, minimum flow even when uh, there is supply from canals and till the conservation measures of uh, uh, our catchment comes to uh, into a fruitful way and this pondage can be used for releasing uh, water to the stream and to maintain the minimum flow especially during the non monsoon seasons and few other like the community related uh, action plans like uh, protection groups monitoring of water quality stream flow and displaying it installation of cctv to just with the uh, you know throwing of waste into the stream and campaigns to Uh, were also proposed so these were the uh, action plans and proposed for uh, rejuvenation of kolaman todu and there were uh, many outcomes that we suggested uh, like like we highlighted because of this execution of this uh, the good part is the local uh, the mla of the area uh, and uh, other people uh, were very much interested they and with this plan and uh, implemented few of it and still trying to implement the rest of the strategies and they even got uh, 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 listed in the at the kerala mission it is taken as one of the projects at the kerala mission also uh, so this is going on the implementation phase is going on and um, there is one more case study i would like to uh, i to present in front of you uh, that is about a water body in kolikode district uh, the area is called parapodi and the lake is also called parapodi lake it is in the in, like it's in the city itself not exactly but one one side of the city i should say the best part of this is there was a water body about the 5 acre area as shown in the blue this water body is existing there for a long time and there is surrounding area of about 50 to 60 acres which was a paddy land i think in the past but this is not uh, being cultivated for a long time and another issue this area faces is in the downstream part here the punur pura is flowing so whenever there is flooding in the punur pura the back water flow comes and this area gets flooded so this was the issue with this and uh, it also this was a uh, Uh, we in connection in uh, proposal from uh, the local uh, mla 
Pradeep Kumar, MLA. He came up with the plan to develop this uh, water body, and uh, there are if possible measures to reduce the flooding effects. So, this were the bag, like background of the story. The town planning department did a preliminary assessment of the area, and they came up with the tourism potential of the lake. If the, the lake can be developed into a larger area, it will be a storage in the inside the city, and also. The water body can be used for tourism purposes. So, and the flood, flooding in the area can also be controlled. We visited the site initially and uh, we looked into the water body. We could sight many birds in this area. Uh, so, we proposed to conduct the study slightly in deeper, like we said in the planning phase was done by the town planning and the MLA. So, we tried of getting into the scientific studies. So, this was as discussed in the previous, it is analyzed many things. We did even did a, a catchmas model. To understand the creation of pond age. And there was also one more proposal like in this area, the existing water body area, is it possible? Is there a feasibility of deepening this area so that there is there will be more depth available for especially for boating activities? So we all did the another analysis of uh, uh, hydrogeology to understand whether that can be uh, done, performed, and all. So, we analyzed the groundwater, we conducted VES surveys to understand whether how much is the depth of that uh, clay layer. So, we found that it is only 1 to 1.28 meter, and if the clay layer is removed, there is a chance that uh, the water body will not be there, it will not even exist because. Um, so, we suggested not to remove it and deepen the water body. So instead, we suggested to have the boundaries of the paddy area be protected and uh, raise the uh, side areas so that we can store more water. We analyze the water quality, flora and fauna was analyzed by a specific, uh, specialized team. This is the picture of the water body. And we could not find any endangered species, but there are many birds coming in there. We even did the lake uh, storage capacity survey to understand uh, the volume of storage at various uh, levels. We projected and, and we even did the social survey of the, the area to understand are the people ready to uh, accept the change of this water body in, in local vicinity. So these are the conclusions that we came up with. Of about 50 to 60 acres available, about 35 uh, acres can be developed as a water body. So existing water body has only five acres. So another 30 acres can be developed. So, the clay layer should be kept as it is. We propose to have a bund at uh, 9.15 meter condo. And we also proposed a regulatory structure at the downstream point of the lake so that the flooding from the Kunur Kudan is not reaching the water body, but the water here can be stored also. Depth was varying up to two meter. <coughs> and pond will be full uh, till November and uh, during the non monsoon there will be water, but not to the full uh, capacity. 
even in march it may come to 14 acres but still there will be water and ground water will also be you know recharged because of the more water presence here so few other benefits which were projected because of the project okay uh if you have any questions you can ask now uh, this will be my last slide i am not going beyond this so if you have any doubts you can uh, raise your questions right now so that uh, we will get about 10 15 minutes to discuss and uh, and i will end with this slide Okay, uh, let me talk about this slide then. Okay. <clears throat> During the lockdown of COVID-19, we had heard many things about uh, rejuvenation, right? Rejuvenation of water bodies. Even the Yamuna, Ganga, even some of the lakes in Bangalore, they all got uh, rejuvenated by itself. Sometimes it's uh, it's also possible that without even doing anything. So the the culprit, the way these water bodies were getting polluted, the main main stakeholder who was you know polluting it was the human race. So where, during the lockdown, what happened? We all know. The color of water in Emuna, in the first picture on the right, top left column, if you see, this is, this is what the nature can do. So sometimes even when we plan a lot of uh, activities for rejuvenation of uh, water bodies, they may not be that much effective, but other than the nature can do. Like, uh, we usually, recently there is an ad in, uh, in the television and all that we see. Uh, I remember it was uh, a Cadbury five star. Doing nothing, nothing is also good. So nature is, is more capable than human. So nature is capable of rejuvenating itself also. But with the human interventions, uh, the bodies, water bodies need help. So with that, I would like to conclude the session. Uh, if you have any doubts, please raise. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for, for your informative topic. And uh, uh, we got a, you got to share us the a slice of your knowledge about uh, rejuvenation of Pullman Powder River and the Calgary Lake and uh, several other aspects of rejuvenation. The session is yeah, now open for questions. Uh, the participants can come forward uh, if you intend to do so. OK, sir, we have received a couple of questions. Uh, and I uh, may I read it out? Yeah, please. How is climate change measured from rainfall observations? Climate change actually needs to be done a different study for climate change impact. It's not only the rainfall observations. It needs to be done in a long time. That uh, We have experts in CWRD who are concentrating on climate change. So, uh, it's not that only looking into that uh, point values, but uh, it is kind of uh, uh, a long time analysis. So it's not exactly looking into that point annual values. That was just to give you a picture of what is happening. Yeah. Okay, uh, we have another question. Uh, 
are the flow regimes of the rivers of kerala properly properly documented flow regimes of rivers not exactly i should say few of them where this this type of studies are happening they are documented well but uh, not in their in their uh, stretch of the rivers and uh, it's all in pockets and parts actually not completely i should say okay thank you so much sir uh, it was uh, a wonderful session and uh, we are very much grateful to have you here on behalf of the department of civil engineering central polytechnic college tiruvannadapuram we express our gratitude to you sir now uh, i would call upon the one of the participants to come forward to give your feedback about the session one of you can come forward and give feedback anybody please hello, hello sir kekunnundo a kekunnundo kekunnu sir nalla valuable aayittulla section aayirunnu id attend cheyan pattiyile valare adhigam sandosham undu inde organize cheyida ellarkkum oru vaadu nanni pratheechi rajalakshmi teacher aanu nammala idinathottu add cheyidathu teacher kkum ottiri nanni undu thank you thank you very much okay thank you teacher uh, now we will wind up this session and we shall meet again at 2 o'clock for the next session thank you all very much you yes. will be uh, provided with the link of uh, feedback about the session in your uh, whatsapp group uh, please do uh, submit it thank you thank you all thank you